Hello guys, welcome back to DSS special 53rd birthday celebration. It's day 22 and we're back here again celebrating the lives of people who have been touched by DSS message, who have transformed themselves and who have testimonies, remarkable stories, remarkable encounters to be able to share with you. And um, these testimonies are for you and I to draw inspiration from, to draw understanding from, and to be able to know that no matter what you're going through, you're not alone and there is always a way out. And DSA has gone through the, you know, the hard process of gleaning and, uh, and you know, mining all these truths, putting them together. And the people who you're seeing this month are people who have taken the time to take in these lessons that DSA teaches and have used it to transform their lives. Today is day 22. Like I said, I'm Joshua Matare coming to you from Kiev. And from the first of this month, we have been having a different guest every day sharing with us how they've been able to make use of DSS materials to better their lives and to begin to influence their families, influence their communities, and some of them influence their nations. Today we have a very unique guest. He's Nigerian, but he's based here in Europe and he's going to be telling us how DSS teaching made him bold and confident. Now, we understand that in the world today, boldness and confidence is very rare because a lot of people are afraid of being bullied. They are afraid of um, societal pressures, peer, peer pressures, and uh, what people will think and what people will say. But the person you're going to be listening to you today, the person you're going to be listening to today is going to be telling you how he broke out of a system where he was shy, where he was timid, into a place of of boldness into a place where he can now tell the truth and is now helping to change lives. So please share this link with your friends. Tell them that we're back here, that we're here to help, to bring news that is going to change them, to bring uh, you know stories and testimonies and encounters that will give them a new perspective to life and will help them to be able to make progress. So bring them in, share this in your private chats, share this in the groups that you belong to, and make sure that as many people as possible are fellowshipping with us or are sharing this platform with us this evening. So without much further ado, I'm going to be welcoming um, our guest for today, which is who, whose name goes by Peter Ose Andrew, all the way from Belgium. Hello, Peter. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Joshua. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm so very happy to be on this platform today. Well, Thank you very to much. Have you. Thank you very much. I'm so happy. Fantastic. So um, can you please tell us who you are? Yeah, my name is Peter Ose Andrew, as you have earlier introduced me by. Uh, I'm a Nigerian football, Nigerian, proud Nigerian, proud Africa from Edo State, proud. And I live here in Belgium, married with three children, three kids, beautiful wife, wonderful one. Amazing. Congratulations Amazing. On, uh, on having a beautiful family and having a beautiful wife and kids. Now, that is something that a lot of people have been able to accomplish. And um, you're, you're, you're part of that group, that unique group of people. Now yes. we're going to have to break, we're going to have to break away into, you know, you look very colorful and I see that we're representing Nigeria. Yeah, today, Nigeria. <laughs> which is brilliant. So we're going to have to take you out of just the family unit, which most of the world has been able to accomplish to this unique, you know, field of confidence and boldness. So can you tell us when was the first time that you met DSA? But before yeah. then, tell us what was your life like? prior to when you met DSA? Yeah, actually, um, I was born 49 years ago, almost. Wow. Uh, wow. Many people say I don't look it, but that is a fact, that is the truth. Um, I lived in Nigeria till my 33 years. I was mm -hmm. not really um, a born-again Christian, let me put it that way. Because when we say born-again Christians, then we always say, ah, are you a Christian or you are a Muslim? I will always say I'm a Christian, you know? Um, I was not born in a family where we are, they are Christians or they go to church. Um, though when we were growing up, I, we used to go to a church, like, like f programs, maybe somebody invites you, not like my mother, not with my mother, not with my father. Um, actually, it was, I was not too fanatic, like all those Christian, born Christian, uh, how do you say it, uh, into a Christian family. But the only thing I would say, if you ask me, I would say that I'm a Christian, because mm -hmm. I know I'm not a Muslim, you know. So when I, when I, my journey, when I got to Belgium, um, you know, it was another different ball game. And I, my first friend I ever have was a, was a pastor. His name was Evangelist Isaac Dennis, but he's late now. So it was just my three months in Belgium when I, when I 
when I found him, when I met him, and uh, I, I live with him in his in his compound in the premises of his church. So that is how I really find myself in the in the house of God here in Belgium, 2003 precisely. So go so, ahead. Mm -hmm. So after then, I, you know, I don't really know how who is Christian. You know, how did he work? Is he going to church? Is he uh, because you take your Bible or whatever? But well, I was in the church. Then from there, I started doing a program. I started joining choirs and everything. Then um, I started having the subconsciousness about Christianity, about how to serve God, about give your life to Christ, and so on and so forth. So, but at the, after two years or so, he relocated to America. So I was um, I was alone in the premises of the church. There was coming once in a while. At a point, I was left in the alone in the church. Then do the cleaning and all so all kind of thing. Then in the middle of that. I was also deported to Nigeria, the same 2000 yeah. 2006. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> so, God so have it, I came back the same the same year after seven months in Nigeria. So my life changed again. So um, I I look for that local church that I was attending. Then uh, I didn't know what was going on. But I, I would take my Bible to church. I I mean I would not open a verse. If the Bible even the pastor is even preaching, I don't even know how to find the Bible verse. So mm -hmm. I just go to church, we pray. So up till uh, 2011, 2010, 2011, I met another pastor here in Belgium. I was attending there because then I was already married to my my wife now, and he's a Nigerian pastor. He he, he has a branch, just a, a church, just one uh, branch. Uh, headquarter, so he wanted to bring a branch to my city, and he, he tried to use me and my wife because he said we were a little bit influential, and uh, he liked my character and my personality. Then I don't even know how to quote Bible, as I said before. I don't know how to quote any verse. But before you go on, during all this time, did you ever repent? Were you born again? Did you have an encounter with Actually, God? What, yeah, I would not even say what repent because I was not like that bad guys or maybe drinking or smoking or womanizing. I was not that kind of character before. So that is the only part we know as a repent, you know, in Nigeria, you know, we only say when you repent, you don't go, you don't have girlfriends, you don't have, uh, um, you don't go after girls drinking, smoking and all those kind of womanizing. That is kind of repent. I, but in our own context, I mean, did you like say the sinner's prayer? Accept Jesus into yeah, your heart. Yeah, 2000 and, 2004, I said that, yes. Uh -huh, okay. I said that. I was even baptized in 2004. I was baptized in my uh, the church I was, the first but, pastor. But that in I the church you were going to, they were not teaching you the word of God. They were not teaching you how to grow in faith, how to know God and all that. They, they know really because hmm. it's the same system. It's talk, they're talking about uh, uh, problems, about devil, about... Uh, uh, something that will block your way where you don't, where you don't, all those kind of their style of teaching. Maybe they teach Bible study, uh, maybe with their own Bible manual, you know, like that. They, they, they structure it out for their own, to, just for them to put you on their, their own direction. So that's what I find out later. Initially, before I started uh, following DSA, I didn't know about those things. Mm -hmm. That uh, they can program you to do exactly what they want, you know. So before then, when I break out from, uh, precisely 2017, I break out from our African church completely. Because Why? I, yeah, because uh, before that time, there was, because we, were, we were having a small branch. We were from one location to another location. We were not having a permanent place. Everything was going well with the pastor. I always bring my instrument, the instrument home. I'm the first person to go to church, set up the instrument. Uh, set up the church. I'm the last person to come home where there's a program. I use my car to to take everybody everywhere. But uh, when we now got a place, everything changed, you know. And um, I was one person that was not accepting when something is wrong. I don't keep my mouth shut it's because there was some challenges that we have uh, about issue of our money, about uh, how it's not where appropriate, and some argument differences with the pastor. So. Then we have we have some crack from 2016. So because then I was already doing Bible study, uh, making announcements, lead uh, prayers, and all those kind of things. That was from 2014 
13 precisely to 2016 to 17. So I was already active in the church, thinking I'm doing God's work. You understand? Go to church, all mm -hmm. night prayer meetings and all those, you know, attending uh, all kind of activities. You understand? So it all happened in 2017. It was done in 2017 that I ran from the whole of 2017 to the end, towards the end of the year, it was always problem. I was always problematic. I was the, how do you say it in, in, in the, our attempts in the church, said I'm a, the re rebellion. I was the rebellion type, you know. A rebel in the church. I was a rebel, yes. I was a rebel because I was not actually keeping my mouth shut. My wife was always telling me, are you the one that have to talk? Sometimes it would be a problem <laughs> between both of us when we, when we come back home. And I said, no, if I don't talk, who will talk? But this thing is wrong, but you know that it's wrong. So why do you want me to accept it? He said, but everybody are there. I'm not the only person. OK, I will try my best not to talk next time. But next time, I can't help it. <laughs> so I was not a problem to the, to the pastor somehow. There's a lot of, there was a lot of problem. There's a, there was a big problem, actually, that it was difficult for him to get rid of me because I was like a ton on his flesh. Mm. So, but what happened is that around December 2000, and December or November 2017, I was still attending the church. I was still a member, sitting down. I was not taking part in anything. He systematically withdrew me from activities. Yeah. He started doing the planning by himself. We were like three of us or four of us that do Bible study and taking all the activities, making the church to function. So he decided to do those things by himself. So I was not functioning anymore. Bible study, I was not there. Um, prayers, occasionally announcements, and which it was really, I mean, I saw everything, everything was just too obvious. So, but before then, I already seen DSA messages through my friend, one of my friends from Finland. But I don't, I don't even, even click it to watch it. I don't, I would just say, who is this man? Just talk. I don't even watch. So that faithful Sunday, we were, I was just in the church Sunday service, and uh, he was just like all those kind of uh, exaggeration, because he was already watching DSA. Uh -huh. Probably he, yeah, I think so. Because he, if, he, if, if he was not watching, he wouldn't have said what he said in the, you understand? So immediately, he made sure that word, the name DSA. He says something like, God has blessed him, God has used him, and he wants to, I'm not, he's trying to destroy the kingdom of God now. He's trying to, you know, probably he was thinking that I was really, I was watching too, but then I was not watching. That is, maybe that is the reason I was proving stubborn. So, but when I got home that very day, around in the evening, DSA was doing a program, then it was a video program talking about churches, their decision, they are uh, deceived. Although they are manipulation, that is how I started watching the essay. Oh my God! So your pastor, in I, the in the in the process of trying to stop you from watching the essay, drove you to watching the essay. <laughs> That's right. That was incredible. What happened. <laughs> so go ahead. And then when you came, he was he, when you came back home. He was now talking about the church. Yeah, he was talking about the church and the deceptions and the, the deception and, all and that. the yeah the manipulation and the witchcraft thing and all those kind of stuff. Those things were really irritating me before before now, because although I was not like really no, but I know that something is not right. I mean the money, I mean the manipulation, oppression, asking money, this that, sowing seed, all those kind of thing, challenging us with a. Uh, uh, probably just called me and my, my wife. And we are receiving. We are, both of us are working. We should be. I mean, paying tight and steady and those kind of things. I mean, there are a lot of things. I was thinking there's a lot of things we need to do or to discuss because many people are here. They need direction. That is what I was thinking then. Mm. You know, mm. I know that people are struggling too. Many people come, they don't have residence, they don't have work. I mean, they are telling them, you know, pray God will open them. I come when you are not doing the right thing, it's not going to work. Mm. So these things were like, something that I'm not comfortable with, but I was not sure mm. if I was in the right, if I, my thinking was right then. And compared to the father, he was not behaving, somebody that was supposed to emulate like 
as the head of the church, as a pastor, and he was now doing some crooked, you know, crooked ways of, you know, manipulation, get information from that, a kind of thing. Because I'm a very smart guy, I know that. I, but the fact that I'm older than him, so even though he's a pastor, so I was not seeing those things. It was not really genuine. It was not. So that thing really makes me upset, and I was not able to compromise with him. It got to a point that when he wants to, when we have a elders meeting or meeting, he now he will not call me three days to the meeting because I was not keeping my mouth shut. I challenged everything, kind of what is not right. We, you know. So he will not be telling me, you know, Brother Peter, we have meeting next week. I said, Pastor, I know already. We already announced it last week Sunday. So uh, this Saturday is the meeting. I, I just want to let you know maybe he knows why. He was trying to, like, you know, take me clothes and those kind of things, which I know, but I was not, I was not uh, that kind of person at all. So after then, I, that December time when he matured it, I was to the end of that year, I make a vow that if I want to begin to come to this church, there is something I will see that will motivate me. So I, I was not really sure if I was, then I was already listening to the essay to every day, that it was every day then, every evening. So I was not sharing DSA messages. <laughs> so immediately I started sharing, they, they called me. On your social media platforms, on Facebook? On my social media, immediately I started sharing. Hmm. So they now called me and, and said, uh, actually, he didn't call me, because you know that he called me, and we, he didn't, if he tells me, I will be very, very upset. So he said, ah, did, uh, I, did I, did I, did the Ed, the Reverend called me. I said, no, I didn't receive his call. I didn't, no miss call, nothing. He said, I didn't want to call me, he wants to talk to me. I said, okay, no problem, I'm expecting. Which Reverend? You mean the head of the church? The head of the, yeah, the head of the church, the general of Asia, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that Sunday, he he came to church, he came to our headquarters and uh, our branch, and he was telling me, he said, hey, after the service and everything, ah, oh, Peter, he really wants to call me. That he called me. I said, no, I did, you didn't call me. I didn't see your mm -hmm. miss call. He said, anyway, uh, I should not join the hypocrite, all those uh, people that is uh, try to bring the kingdom of God down. I should not begin to share the share what's on the social media and those kind of thing. He didn't just go direct special address, but I know what he was talking about. He was being so, diplomatic <laughs> about it. Yeah, because he was diplomatic. So, but for me, I didn't I didn't measure one word. I didn't say nothing, but I was upset. Hmm. But I thought I'm not a baby. So you cannot tell me what to do. That is what I feel in my spirit. I feel in my mind. So when I got back home, I block him. I delete him. I delete the pastor. I, I everybody possible four of four four of them in my church. I delete that very day. Hmm. So later hmm. they sent another sister to me and came to my house, tried to tell me, talk to me. I shut her down completely. Hmm. So that is how hmm. I I stopped. So I started following. They say listen to his messages and everything. So that means some of the manipulations that DSA was teaching about at the time, you, you yeah. could see them going on in your church. Every day, every service. They are, you know, this is a war that we have to overcome. I'm telling you. Um, people don't want to talk about it. They are so com they compromise war. They want to uh, no, Peter, you judge God will judge. God has given us permission to speak. Mm. He said, when two prophets or three speak, we should judge. We should question. I don't know this word. I don't understand it before. Don't touch my anointing. Don't do my prophet. Don't question the man of God. Who said that? I don't, those things are alien to me now. But you back understand? then, you believed them, and they were trying to use yes, it to I, keep you quiet. I believed them. I believed them, but I was not doing it. Because I was, I, mm. maybe my character, when I was, I began to, to discover it more and more. You understand? Because mm -hmm. if I was, if I believed them, I would not be arguing or having problem with him every day, every time, because it was become obvious that we were having problem. Even the former pastor that said he is bringing church, we started. It was one year. We that was in 2000 and, 2011. I I I opened a, a branch here, like a branch. I was so you didn't know much of the Bible, but they made you a pastor and you opened the whole I was branch. Not really, yeah, I didn't accept it as a pastor, but I was the one that rented, uh, made the place, 
it was a government place. We we're not really paying like that because I I have a, there was a because I'm a, like kind of a citizen here. I have a right to have a government place so long as for gathering every Saturdays and every Sunday something like that. So I was we know we were not paying, but it was for one it ran for one year. So <laughs> you know because these people are not genuine. They are looking for somebody that they could manipulate or something like that. Because I was not giving I questioned that guy too. We questioned. There was a problem that told him. Then I, I questioned him then. There's something that happened in the church. Suddenly, the wife became a pastor. And uh, at the end of the day, I questioned him. Then it became a, uh, I became a problem to him, too. So the church did not last more than one year. So that is how that, too, uh, that is how it happens. So what is it that made you to be shy? Because you said DSS teaching gave you boldness and confidence. But from everything yes, you've said, it's clear that, that you were somebody who was committed in church and you really loved the things of God and you really yes. wanted to see the church move forward. So yeah, how is it that all this while you didn't have confidence despite all of the activities you were carrying out in church? Because there's no, tr there's no trust in the... They, they don't have confidence in you, when, especially when you uh, question a lot or when you are... Uh, like it turned to their flesh. That's what I now figure out because I, although I was not good, I, I'm not good in, in reading then, like, you know, um, it was difficult for me because the opportunity is not given to you because they want you to be under their subject, under their own. Under they their, want their own. To, yeah, they want their anointing, their own anointing to flow to you. Mm. You know, mm. one, you know, all those kind of, all those kind of talk, you know, and, um, uh, why I was not having confidence because sometimes when you are want to do one that I was studying, let me just give give you this scenario. I was teaching Bible study. Uh, the pastor came the same time to the church, and I was I using microphone. You know what he told me? What he said what? to me immediately. He didn't even have patience. He said to me to off the. It's just said that you off the microphone. That there's no much people. I was devastated. I was I lost control. Hmm. That very day, hmm. I couldn't figure out what I did wrong for not to have patience with me. And the other time, again, he said I should stick on the Bible, the what do you call the Bible study manual they they gave to me that I should hmm. not go hmm. off the Bible. So he didn't want you to express anything other than what was written in the script. Yes, in the in, yeah on the script, the scripts, you know, and. I, sometimes I will be studying. I think I will say this verse. I will read this. I will tell my wife to help me to read. I will call my daughter. I said, but he didn't. I didn't see anything. Tally. So I will try as much as possible then to figure out. So I think there was a kind of a recommendation that people will say, ah, when I teach, people will understand. People will like it. I was not hearing, but my wife was side talks. I think he had it too. So those things were too challenging, I think. Mm. Those things will be challenged. Or oh, I didn't know I can do what I'm doing, even facing talking on life, the whole world is watching. I, I, I it's it's really kind of thing that I think I'm not able to do. I'm telling you. The reason because I, So at I the time it. at that time you said you were already teaching in church. Yeah. So is it that you were teaching and you still were not bold? No. I think mm. because you are not being given no because the essay message, one thing I have learned, it discovers you. Mm -hmm. He wants you to discover whom you are. He, because he said, there is something that is in you that God is interested in. The reason mm -hmm. why he created you. So, that is what I now find out differently. So those things started to trigger boldness in you. Yes, I mean, yes. Because I was thinking I was I was not having confidence to 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 come and maybe I, I maybe I first of all I would think maybe prejudice I don't I cannot read good I cannot make pronunciation good maybe I will not understand I will lost in my uh, in the process or whatever I was not having those confidence because okay I was teaching maybe how many people sometimes 20 15 it's not a big church for example you understand mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I didn't think that I was able to think more than doing something like what I have now, all the plans and the plans that I have, what I have discovered that I would, I can, I would be able to do. Wow. wow. So, so in 2017, you left, the, you finally left the church. 
Yes. And then you started watching DSA now all the time and you stopped going to church, correct? I stopped going to church. Hmm. I stopped completely going to church because I he came to see me at home he, just to talk with me. I told him plain, proper plain that when he started teaching, because he's a young guy, I said you were teaching good. I was writing a little bit then, but later you started, everything changed. So... Okay, so you mean when he started preaching, he was teaching the word of God and he was yeah, honest. He was but yeah, as time went on, he started doing some of the manipulations to collect money, money from people started, and things like yeah. that? Yes, yes, started. Mm. The man, prophecy, prophesying, all those kind of witchcraft, prophesying, and uh, ancestral cause, all mm. those kind of mm. evil, evil things they have sold in the mind of the people for a very long time that is affecting, affecting them today. They, we need to speak about it and try to give people confidence that God, Jesus loved them. And there's okay. something in there. Mm -hmm. there, is, there, is, there is something in every man God has created. I, I, I will say this. I didn't finish secondary school. I've said it to DSA two or three mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. I stopped at class one when I was class one years ago, 2000, uh, 1984. So, wow. You know, wow. And I learned work. I have a handwork. Uh, then in Nigeria, carpenter and those kind of things. You know, when you are in that position in Nigeria, you know, you think your life is, you understand, it's mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. totally off of what you can do in life. Because many people are there now, they don't, own, they were not able to find out who they are because they think they have been limited. Mm. They have told them that they will not become anything. They have treated them so much that they don't believe in themselves anymore. They don't believe in God anymore. Mm. They don't even mm. know where is God. They don't even know who is Jesus. Because this man put himself in the middle. So that's the reason I taught it twice. When what really happened when I when I started listening, I listened to thinking series. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. a thinking series. Analytical thinking, purposeful thinking, questioning, worldview, over and over and over again. Then I listened to truth series. The truth mm -hmm. series. The first truth we must speak. We must speak it to yourself about yourself. You must say this, yourself the truth. Don't look at it. Don't lie to yourself because we are, I find out that we lie to ourselves. Even in the church, it's, everything is just like fantasy. It's just off the line. That is the reason we don't have growth. There's, there's wickedness. There's, that's the reason. I find that these things are just what we, our values now, we have is from the church because our mother then they don't go to church our, most of our mother now they are christian but they don't even know it's only to go and pray for witchcraft and pray for uh, not to kill my son and all those kind of sowing bad seeds some all those kind of thing and this is what we are now that is where our wicked the wickedness of our this generation comes from it's from our mm -hmm. churches mm -hmm. It's from the church. So how long so, were you listening to DSA before you realized that there was a change in you? Were you listening for two months, <laughs> six months not, before not you realized not. that, come, I can't stay in this church and now I'm bold and confident? Yeah, not even, I, I will not say it's two months or one month or whatever. Immediately I listened to him. The from first, the first day? From the first day. Wow. What comes to my mind was, who is this man? Hmm. Is it just all those normal people who talks on the social media that people will not listen to because I don't know him before. Mm -hmm. I've not heard of him. Mm. I don't know he, who was there say who is Dr. Sondia, Pastor Sonia Delaj. I don't know who he is or what he has done. I have done. Then immediately started, I started going to YouTube. I started seeing his church, was, all the announcement and everything. Mm -hmm. I said, wow. Wow, this man I think he knew what he's talking about. I see immediately because that thing was in me. Mm -hmm. That thing that is wrong, that I identify that is wrong. And I see somebody that is bold enough. To express it publicly. Express so it was it as if he was giving words to all the thoughts and all the worries you were having yes. within you. Yes, what me yeah, inside me. And mm. I said, wow, so I'm not alone. Mm. I'm not alone. I think I was... One of I, I was telling, at a point I was telling myself that maybe I cannot just stop not talking hmm. because it was not convenient with my wife as well. Because my wife is a very how do you say it, uh, not talking type, very calm. You can do everything. We just walk away. We don't talk to you never. Forget it. You don't care how who 
I mean, he has the character to do that. But for me, I was the opposite. I'm the opposite uh, type, you know. So we always have issues about it most of the time. So she didn't and handle the change very well. Is it that she didn't understand DS's message because she wasn't listening with you? Or she just didn't like the fact <laughs> that you were speaking out and it was creating yeah, controversy? Yeah, actually, when I stopped going to uh, the former church, mm -hmm. I did it first time because I already learned some principles from DSA mm -hmm. that you don't force people. You don't, you don't, because I stopped, because it's my wife, I have to tell her to stop. Mm -hmm. So what I did, we split, we split the house to get to, into two. I took my son, two of them to, I was going to one Pentecostal Belgian church here, all white folks. Oh, so he, okay. she will still go to the former church. Uh, it didn't last one month anyway. So there's something that happened in the, in the one day, in the, in the meeting, the, as they said, workers meeting. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she came back home and because people called me to come to that meeting, I said, if I go there, what I would do, my spirit is telling me I would destroy everywhere. So mm -hmm. it's not going mm -hmm. to do that. I better stay and let them do what they want to do. So if you said you want to go to the meeting, you can do it. So I went outside. I went somewhere. So when I came back, I said, he heard, she heard me. She was saying that, ah, I was, I was right that I didn't, it was good that I didn't go to the meeting, you know? Hmm. So hmm. I said, why? She explained to me. I said, yeah, that's good. Um, I saw it because I know that they want to prove, they want to provoke me, but I don't want to do that. So I've already taken my decision. I'm not going to go there. So now I know. I've already learned lots of, I can have a communication with God. In my own house, mm -hmm. I will know Jesus one on one. Question my 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 Creator, ask Him question one on one. So I already learning those principles. I already learning those those uh, 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 how to say it, uh, how to serve God, how to have contacts with Him. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. going to a garden, which I know there is no result, it was not even a problem for me anymore. Mm -hmm. It was not a problem. Amazing. Before we go forward, ladies and gentlemen, please share this link with your friends. Share it on your timeline. Send it through your inbox to as many friends as you can. Because what you're hearing right now is, you know, I don't know whether fortunately or unfortunately, what a lot of people are going through, but there is hope for them. They yeah. don't have to continue groping in the dark. They don't have to keep going back to a place where they can feel on the inside of them that something is wrong, but they just have to keep, they just feel like they have to keep going back because it's their, it's their community, you know, it's, it's what they've been used to. It is possible to break out of the norm, it's possible to break out of religion and begin to build a stable and productive relationship with God and with yourself as well. A lot of people in church are not at peace. He was a committed member of the church, he was one of the people who even started the branches, like you've heard. But there was something wrong and he could feel it, but he couldn't express it until he listened to DSA. And that was when his confidence, his boldness came back and he was able to speak the truth, break away from the church. And now, like you said, like you heard him say, his relationship with God is blossoming. So you might be able to help somebody on your timeline today by sharing this message with them because they might just be going to the, through the exact same thing. So please help them. And um, we believe that they would also have testimonies a few days, few weeks or years from now of how they came across DS's message and testimonies of Brother Peter and how he'd helped to transform their life. So please do somebody good by sharing this link. And I believe that you will be grateful that you did. So back to you, um, Brother Peter. Can you please tell us um, how things progressed from there? So when your wife told you that you were right, did she now say, OK, something went terribly wrong, so we don't need to go back to church anymore? And um, I, she, she, I respect her for that. And she said she's not going to go anymore mm -hmm. because she was really deeply upset because th there's a lot of things that happened prior to that time. So she was just bearing it, try to move on. People would call. I was the one that was even talking to her then to, for us to move on, to, to go. We, let's, you know, sometimes we have a conversation, okay, let's forget, let's do that. But immediately she comes back from that meeting she said, and that was the last time I speak so to you. So is it that the meeting <laughs> didn't go as well as planned, or is it that they... Because they were, or they, were, that they, were betrayer, they were betrayer in that meeting. Uh -huh. You know, they were betrayer. You know, there are some people in the church, you know, 
you you have confidence you like maybe they pray a lot they speak in tongues and you just have confidence in them. <laughs> so so there are people that uh, I think the way what she explained to me that was a betrayer. What okay. Okay. they're supposed to tell her some things before the meeting, some co close friends, and they didn't tell. And when they were in conversation, and the pastor said, they told my wife to come and plead, beg her, beg him for some certain things that happened. And he was not told. And these people were talking to her every day. Mm. And they mm -hmm. didn't tell they didn't tell her that. This is what happened. That the pastor was boasting that we must come to beg him. Anyway, all this kind of thing. As if, I mean, that is where my life is, you know. So that aspect and some other thing that concerns me that I should have maybe explode that he was bragging because I was, maybe I was not there. So that really um, make my wife, she, she, as I said, she will not use a word. Even though that thing hurt her, she will not speak one word. And she just came back home, and that was it. So, so did she start listening to DSA with you? What did you say? Did she start listening to DSA like you, you were listening, or she still left no, you and actually was just she worshiping was, at no, home? Uh, yeah, that is a very important, uh, <laughs> important uh, topic or issue, you know. She's not listening, but uh, the way I'm listening, I don't think maybe, maybe one video or two, I can't really show sure you, it's not really listening to me. But he says some, she says some certain things, and the way I'm talking, the way I'm quoting the world, the way I'm writing, the way I'm doing things, yeah, that was... She could see really that you were growing, <laughs> and you were changing, and things were getting better. Yeah. Um, but they say challenge, there were still challenges, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was, maybe I was doing it extra, maybe I was not minding the house, maybe I was not conscious of some certain things at home, like uh, there was still some misunderstanding, you know, some argument. So, and um, because she's not the speak, she's not the talking type. So, I take me time to pull words from from her to understand that okay, where do I go from now? What is it now? What is it? So, but I thank God, she's not still listening. But now, just from just few days ago, things change. I'm telling you, just few days ago. Hmm. Yeah. So what did you so some, with your <laughs> sorry come again? We were able to sort out some differences. Okay. You know, but yeah, I was not like. Uh, did I did just, the like, family team. series help? The change, yeah, the, um, the change was like two degree, <laughs> hundred degree, I think. Wow. So something like wow. that. Yeah. Did you listen to the DSA family series on YouTube? <laughs> I do. I, I think a uh, couple of days ago, I called DSA and there were some issues that was going on. And, and DSA said, go back to the family series. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think there was a program that, that day after finishing the program. So I think I was able to watch. I've watched them before, you know. Maybe I that was not my, maybe I think that was not my You were not focused on it at the I time. Was the focused. church was yeah, really your that, focus. <laughs> yes, I was not focused in that aspect. And because I've watched it, I've listened, even though when I'm working, I don't see the video, I put my earpiece, and even though when I'm sleeping, I sleep with it. I listen to the messages, I read, read the books, I try to, because I see something that people is strong me to, to accept. Mm -hmm. So because of the understanding that I have now, I believe it's difficult for people to change, to, to really see what is right, because we have not been doing things that is right, especially in our Christendom. Mm -hmm. yeah. So imagine a child that is born 30 years ago and was born into a ministry, and if the parents were already a church, a Christian, and this is what they have known, and this is what they have been doing for all these years. He was born inside. He was born into that into the church, into the ministry. It's take by the grace of God for that child. If the mother, and the, if the parents did not change, it is by the grace of God. But this generation is a very fast generation to learn. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I say time without number to this. I said it's not. People think it's going to be difficult. I know nothing that's not. They don't have challenge. The challenge are there. I can. I'm experiencing it as well. You understand? But people are not getting it. People are understanding that 
it, all of them have one symbol of challenge or one one slogan of one slogan is to keep you there all these churches to keep you there as so long you can stay there you are their subject you are their money making uh, something so you're and, under their control and they can use you as they please as they please yes so what results have, did you have when after you started listening to dsa what changed apart from the boldness or what did you do with the boldness and confidence that you got? Okay. I would say that uh, I started planning because, you know, DSA have a lot that sometimes when you, are not, when you don't control yourself, when you are not, conf you are not uh, how do you say it, uh, uh, strong mind and you don't follow some principles, you oh, get when lost. When you're not organized. When you're not organized, you get lost. Mm -hmm. So I started listening to HMT, especially the, uh, the HMT of uh, system building, mm -hmm. system building. So, and during his messages, I discover I, I'm not a quiet person. Like, I'm a quiet, people, people who know me when I was young, I'm a very shy person. Some of my friends that know me when we're growing up, they mm -hmm. used to tell, some of them used to tell me, how they see this in me sometimes. And when I was in Nigeria, I was always on the not the wrong side, the good side, talking, you know. People said sent a lot of things to me. So because the SM message, as I said, he he teaches you to discover purpose. Because that is the only way you can start from. So I gather those things and I say, okay, um I can speak, I will not be silent. When I read the uh, study, one of his book, um, the essence and value of life. Okay. Then when I go to the chapter eight or so of that book, the, the story of Martin Luther King, mm. I see some powerful word quotation. You know, and I see that uh, injustice everywhere is a threat to justice. Mm. I started seeing some some powerful word even from DSA quotation and everything. And the Blake of Silence. So I seen his, his book, The Blake of Silence, The Mountain of Ignorance, and mm -hmm. so on, Elijah Challenge, and so on. So, so the church is the bringing ground for saviors and deliverers. All this, I'm not saying that these are my specialty. These are, pro, it provoked me. It challenged, no, let me use the word challenge. Because when you see everything that is written in Adela book, let me first of all use take life is an opportunity. When I that is my first book, and I started seeing that being me alive is an opportunity. So why am I complaining? And it teaches it teaches you that you are the first resources of God. So don't complain about resources. So you are resources. You have everything that God has created you with. So what are you waiting for? Mm. So and when I, when I read The Blick of Silence, that too make me say, I will not, because these are the things that we are passing through, and some people know, some people are dying, some people have died, and people are still dying in government, in, in, in religious body, in our society, in our community, everywhere. Nobody wants to speak. Even though you want to speak, you, maybe you'll be shut down because you have not seen whom you don't know whom you are. So I be, first of all discover that, yes, I'm a personality, I'm human, I'm God's creator, I'm God's son. So that takes me to church is a pretty grand and saviors and deliverers. And when I studied that book, <laughs> before I don't know what church is, why do we go to <laughs> church even? Many people don't even know why they go to church, what church is supposed to be. The church is a place that you discover sons. When we complain about corruption, we complain about uh, things are not moving well in Nigeria. Things that there are there are crimes everywhere. There are situations. There are, I would say, it oppression. That a church is where that we're supposed to be the light of the world, to, where sons and daughters will be will be will be will be found to take every part, every spare of influence of life. That is the first time I, I've not heard it from any pastor saying that they only complain about the government. Uh, pray, 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 all this, we will pray, because they are benefiting for the ignorance of the people. 
Mm. So when I because DSA books are very I'm not too like educated guy person like that, but when you read this book, when you concentrate, when you speak the, you know the truth to yourself and you really want to change. One or two books, even though you are a graduate, you are a master holder and you are sincere, you, you will find something that will transform you from his book and his messages. Fantastic. You know? So what did you do with all of this knowledge that you have? Now, now, the first thing I did, I was able to break my, yeah, though it's, it's one thing to teach maybe like 30 to 20 people. And first of all, I started doing, uh, how do you say it, um, recording video. And after recording, I will post it. Then. Ah, so you started <laughs> teaching other people through video? Yeah, I'm doing a live video now. I was, wow. uh, I think, one year and one year and two months now, I've been doing videos. Hmm. on uh, YouTube, yes, and I have a... So all the other educated guys with a lot of degrees, I don't see them doing a lot of series like you. Yeah, but because, yeah, because I, I feel I'm not doing more. Hmm. I'm, sometimes I, I have something telling me that you, you have a lot to do. People need to hear. People need to uh, um, uh, discover other people that will, that will also take the battle, the matter. Because we need people, we need sons and daughters, we need sons. We don't need baby, we need sons. So when I started doing recording, posting my record video, so about uh, around February this year, mm -hmm. so I said to myself, oh, I want to go to live. I want to see if I can do live. I want to see if I can confidently, people are watching, maybe one or two person, then if I can. So I started doing live. Mm -hmm. uh, couple of uh, two months now plus two months plus and then um, I have some kind of messages that I've, other messages that I've read I've write from Adelaide book from you no know, inspiration from his book and everything you know what is happening from the word of God and everything so I have a lot then from there I think a couple of uh, last year too you know he, he talked about Adelaide talked about solitude you know mm -hmm. so I Try it, uh, do it like last year more than three times. So the first time that I did it that really gave me confidence was when I had a voice that said, it's appointed to a man to die. Mm. So the question that I asked was, after death, what? The judgment. So what follow? What am I going to judge with on here on earth that I have done? Mm. What is my result? What is my result? Because after the HMT of a uh, system, it really, I was really hot. That was in April, I think, last year. Mm -hmm. I was really hot. I said, no, this something has to begin. You're talking on phone, calling people. You have, did you watch Adela Jab? Did you watch this message? Did you listen to the message I sent to you? I said, no. I will be doing that. Why? Me, myself, I want to do something. That is how. I got the, the name of Freedom, Truth, and Power Ministry. Wow. Freedom, Truth, and Power Ministries. Ladies and gentlemen, that was born out of Peter's adventure into DSA's platform and coming across his messages. And now he has some results to show for it. So please share this link with your friends and let them also come and enjoy the same things that Peter is enjoying because he's not, you know, special in that sense as in you know um that he's doing something that is unheard of he's just taking steps and following the principles that he's been taught and if you follow those steps you would have the same results as well so there is nothing he's doing that is special you can do it as well but he's willing to take the steps and that's why he has the results so he said that oh he doesn't have a big education and all of that stuff but it doesn't matter because he's dedicated himself to self-improvement to self-development and he's now able to have the boldness to teach other people who are a lot more educated than he is. Now, the books he mentioned, The Essence of Life, you know, The Purpose of the Church, all of these books can be found on Amazon. If you subscribe to um, Kindle, the Kindle version, Amazon Kindle, you'll be able to read all of these books on Kindle Unlimited, and you would not have to pay any money for them. They are free. Those of you who are in Africa who want the books delivered to you or you want the hard copies, you can go to DSA Books Planet. 
bamboobooks.com and you can order for your books there. And there's a new platform called BAM Books. You can go online, download the application, and when you subscribe, you'll be able to read all of the books that, you know, DSA has on that platform. So just go to bambooks.io and you'll be able to access all of these books that has transformed Peter's life and has transformed the lives of all the other people that we've heard of. Now, most of the people you're seeing, this is just a small fraction of the people who DSA's, you know, messages has touched. So we just have these ones on here because they are willing to come up here at this point in time to share with us and celebrate DSA's 53rd birthday with him. So you can also share your testimony by writing to DSA and you will happily, you know, entertain your emails and be happy to hear of the changes. And no matter how small it is that you have begun to experience. So if you look on the screen, you will see a book that was written by DSA and you can go to bambooks.io and you'll be able to get all of these books there. So you can go there, you see the essence and value of life. You will see the book on silence, the plague of silence. You will see the book on the mountain of ignorance and all of those books will help to challenge you to understand what it is that you're here for. And those of you who don't know who you are, he, he has spoken a lot about who uh, discovering himself from the messages. You can get the book, Who Am I, Why Am I Here? And there's also a mentorship program, interestingly enough, that is running at this time that teaches and would help to mentor you through the process of self-discovery. So you, all you have to do is write to mentorship at godembassy.org and you would be taught and you know, brought into the program and taken through it so that you can discover yourself. So these are programs that DSA has set aside. Apart from the messages that are on YouTube, there's this special mentorship for people who want to discover themselves so that they can be able to become productive. So we're going to go back to Peter right now so that he can keep telling us of the transformations and the changes that he has experienced. So please tell us, bro, Peter, what has been the reaction of people to this new version of you now that is bold and confident teaching the truth? <laughs> Yeah, a lot of reaction, a lot of mm. misreaction, a lot of people called me as well, my friends, people who knows me in Nigeria, who knows me uh, uh, when I was growing up, when I was uh, more young, younger, and uh, some of my close friends telling me, yeah, Peter, we, we really, we admire you, you we, we trust, we, we are happy that uh, you, you take this responsibility. Why, like, uh, let me say, like my uncle, is a pastor. Uh, mm -hmm. He threatened me not to stop. Uh, yeah. he, he tried, and this is a pastor who told me in 2016 when I went to uh, visit. When I went to visit him, I went to visit him in his church. I went to his church with my family. We were there with my mother. He called me a pastor. You know, he said he sees something in me, and uh, he wants to. Uh, he see that I'm a pastor and. It's not that I teach there. I was. I, I just went to just to respect him. I visit his church on one Sunday, and I took him a microphone. I told him I'm not a pastor. Please don't call me pastor. He said no. It's, it's what he see that he's just saying. I said no. I don't want you to say it because it's not true, you know. And the same <laughs> pastor, my uncle, is telling me to stop that. Uh, I'm not the person that will speak out. I said I can't speak your language. How you become a pastor? He doesn't like your message. Yeah, I'm, I told him I'm not still a pastor because I found myself. I'm a soldier of Christ. I'm a, I'm an ambassador and, a, and I'm a minister of God. All right. You know, those All are right. titles. Those are uh, titles that you people just pick shop, at bishop, geo, all those kind of all those kind of things. I respect them for yeah who they are, but speaking what is the truth. That is what me, I stand for, because I found mm. it. You don't care much for the title. What matters is the message. No, it's the message. I don't care. I don't care what is the title mm -hmm. or who uh, somebody call me bishop or, uh, bishop or whatever. I don't mm -hmm. care. But it is what, who, what I know about Christ and I would believe that I have and the manipulation that mm -hmm. is going on for so many years, for more than 50 decades now, that I've seen back and see that people have destroyed let me tell you this. When I was near 2000, my, lead, my younger brother died. He was a member of Christ's embassy. Let me give you this picture. Maybe it's a testimony for that people to tell to their people. Because these people have manipulated. They have manipulated the, brother, the sons of God or the Christians for so many years. People have died ignorantly. Mm. My brother was yeah. sick. He was admitted in the hospital in UBTH in Benin. So there was a program coming that year, Easter period, in year 2000. And because he was one of the cell leaders then, and he was a very brilliant guy, very brilliant, I was proud of, I'm proud of him. So he forced us to 
to discharge him after two or three weeks in the hospital, a month in the hospital, because he wants to attend that program. Mm. And the, the, the branch doctor was a doctor in the UBT. They facilitated the, they facilitated the, the what do you call it? The, Release. The discharge, yeah. Yeah, the discharge. Because the director of the hospital didn't want them to discharge him. But because of what they have been telling these people about it, then priest was like, as prophet of miracle. They are doing as both of people are healing of HIV, all those kind of propaganda. Then we were ignorant of these things. They set off people, this thing, they have been doing this thing for so many years. They have gained ground, have popularity, manipulate people with social media, with all these satellites and everything. That is how we, I ignorantly, with my mother, then discharged my brother from the hospital on Thursday precisely. He died on Monday. Wow. Um, he attended the program. No, I didn't attend the program. He attended the, the, the Sunday program. The Reverend Tom was there that very day. Precisely Reverend who? Reverend, Reverend Tom, the, the assistant of uh, Chris, the second in command in Benin. He was mm. in that program. He was in that service. He, he was the one that was coming. It was a youth program. I'm saying mm. it because it's a date, tw year 2000, April 11th. Mm. That is the day my brother died. April 10th. Let somebody check that date. My brother was in the church. People were healing of a uh, growing leg. My leg grew out. I was, my, I was leaping. People would not even know. When I look back now, because of the experience and the, the wisdom and the knowledge that I have because of the essay messages, I now look back and see how many years ago now, 20 years ago, they have been manipulating the people. Mm. Even before that time, this is how my brother died. Before we rush him to the hospital on Monday morning, he died on the way going to the hospital because there was no medication. We didn't stop giving medication and everything because we believed that the miracle would take place. He was having that belief because that's what he was told. Hmm. And many God. people have died like that. Hmm. Many people have lost their life. Christ, Christ, Christ Embassy, I'm talking about Christ Embassy. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, you can hear it from Brother Peter yourself. How unfortunate this situation is. And um, he lost a family member because he discharged him from the hospital prematurely against the advice of his doctors because he wanted to go to a church program. And like he said, a lot of people have been through the same process and they've ended up dead. Now, like he said, his younger brother was a very brilliant guy. And who knows the solutions he was carrying within him? Who knows the answers to the world that he was carrying within him? But it was, you know, cut short because of religion. Please share this link on your wall because a lot of people need to be told and they need to hear these things because if they don't, they might fall into the same trap or they might fall into the same bad situation that Peter and his family felt into. His younger brother didn't have to die. But due to whole, the whole religious, you know, circle, that we have and the whole belief system that is just based on deceit and nothing about it is biblical. We're losing a lot of lives. So please help save somebody today. So Peter, now that your life has changed, um, is, your, is your mom pleased with it? Very, yes, because she's a very, uh, I have kind of similarity with her because uh, she's a Christian too, but she was having difficulties to to understand the kind of, uh, I told her about the, how she's I've been treated in that church because I used to visit her church when I go to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I know the pastor. Yeah. So I think precisely three years ago when I visit, that year I met Adelaide, I know I did, I, I met, I come across Adelaide. My mother forced me to, to go and visit him in the office. And he was telling me, oh, let us go and greet the pastor. We have a word of prayer. I said, no, I'm not going. Mm -hmm. I said, I respect, I've already greeted him when I went to put money in the offering. I, I saw him there, I shake him, so I'm not going to. My mother said, no, it was like, okay, I don't want to disrespect her. So we we walked towards his, his office, and when we got to the door, the door, the entrance, and one of the personal assistants said, he have to rest for 30 minutes before anybody could see him. So I was very furious. I was angry with my mother. I said, I told you. If I go there, I will give me 5000 or 10000 for what? I said, these guys, I don't want my, my mother. Then she have not understand. So we let, said, no, please, no, let's go. I said, I came for you. Let's go out. Let's go and enjoy ourselves today. So I said, I prefer to give this money to people I've missed outside. 
people because it was my area that I grew up. So I know I, when I come out, people are already, they're already waiting for me. So I prefer to give them those, this money share for them than to give to that man that is sitting on his own there. Mm, but before cool. I was not talking like that, I have given him some, some money before. I, I respect him. I, I will still lead on my knee giving him for nothing. So immediately I walk outside. I saw a friend waiting for me. They were telling me, ah, you are around. You didn't even let them know. I said, no problem. Just go and enjoy yourself today. I was so happy. I was pleased. I told them, well, I said, you see, this one was better than what you asked me to do. Then, so systematically, I'm telling her now, change her prayer points. Nobody will die because you want somebody to die. God will not kill anybody for you. Those prayer points are just nightmares. Mm. God will not mm. kill anybody for anybody. God said we should forgive and forget and love. Even though he wants to do anything, you are not going to tell him because you know he got a confusion. He's a master. Of, he's a master of the universe. So all those prayer, all those activities, I began to lecture her gradually, gradually, gradually. And she's enjoying my teaching now. Because when I talk, when I call her, it's one hour. Mm. So we bring mm. issues. Don't run to church. Pray in your home. Walk around your building and have quiet time with God because she's a widow. So my father, a long time ago, maybe this month is uh, 26 years ago, my father died. Wow. wow. And she didn't remarry? <laughs> no, she didn't have anybody, no. Okay. Yeah. So brilliant. So from you being a victim and somebody who your mom was running around looking for prayers for, now you're leading her in prayers and you're preaching to her she and you're teaching yeah, her yes, and yeah, you're bringing yeah. her along. And she, she, and she trusts me because uh, when I... What happened in December, my brother, my uncle, first of all, he, when I was trying to tell her, this is, tell him, this is what I have learned, he tried to challenge me. We were having some understanding at a point. That is my uncle that is a pastor, because mm -hmm. he's the mm -hmm. younger brother to my mother. So I said, when I come to Nigeria, there are a lot of people in your church that I see, they are struggling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, this is what we do. We, we look for serious ones. We go and look for a place for them to farm. Mm. We do it like a mechanized farm. We try to put because he's a graduate, he's a master holder. He was once in Israel. He is not a, he's not an illiterate. So because these people are just manipulating these people because they don't they trust them. You understand? So I had that conversation with my uncle last sometime last year, and I said, for you to have a change, I have a meaningful, create a life to other people. Because these people, you you pray for them. Say they will get job, they don't get job, they don't have job, they're just struggling. So what about we create job? And you are paying them wages every month, every week, or every every two, two weeks, for example. Mm -hmm. And create value in them, principles from the word of God. I discussed it with him and he agreed. I guess maybe because he was expecting something from me, and when he got it, during the December period, he started complaining. He was writing some some words to provoke me in my inbox and everything. So because he creates a in his church a youth uh, to say messenger. So I was now posting little by little the SM messages, articles <laughs> from Martin of Ignorance, from Church of the British Ground, from Savior of the Deliverance. I was just like, and I started seeing comments. You know what he did? He blocked what? me immediately. He blocked me. He... <laughs> <laughs> so he he just blocked one, I think it was on New Year Day this year. Completely, I saw that they said 30 minutes ago my name was removing, my number was removed from this uh, group. I said, wow, I wasn't the one that did it. I didn't ask for three different. So when I did a message that weekend, he wrote some funny comments and were like in short. He, he's trying to, I mean, he was trying to provoke me because he wrote a lot of things. So I didn't reply to him. So the thing I just did, maybe it was wrong, I don't know, I blocked him. I blocked it too for my Facebook. So I think when he saw my mother, he was trying to explain to my mother. My mother said, I've told her, I've told her everything. He should leave me alone. That the God that the God that I that called that, that, that I'm observing, that he should leave me to serve the God that I'm serving, what I'm saying, that he liked what I'm saying. So she stopped. He stopped. He didn't call my mother anymore to complain. You're seeing for yourself where you get to create jobs for people in Africa? Yeah, actually, yes. Because, you know, when you, 
when you when you listen to DSA and you you don't change, you won't change. You will not. If you don't have meaningful life for you, if you don't have transformation inside you, mm. you know that mm. you are deceiving yourself. That's the reason I made sure I said his first book, a first message, one of the first messages that I that I that I listened to was thinking series and truth series. Mm. Even mm. till now I still listen to that messages. I say go through those messages because we don't really we are not honest to ourselves enough. So now to go back to what you asked me, what I want to do, yes. Now I have a lot of even so it's a, I'm a little disappointed that I'm not going to Nigeria this year. But yes, okay. it talks mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'm disappointed because when I figured out the ministry already, I said, okay, it's not only to talk, because already I already mentoring some people in Nigeria. Uh, some young guys, I think I have three of them. One is in a Martin of Fire. Mm -hmm. One is in a, uh, no, not no Martin of Fire, the Tulema Church, I forgot the name. Uh, the other one is in Deeper Life. Three brilliant guys. But it's difficult, it was difficult for me to break them. So what I did, this period that this farming issue came in from an extra large farm, so I was able to register them. And we were, we are having some strong conversation. I was able now to get some in Benin, some three comedians in Nigeria because I was planning to have a conference. The first conference I wanted to have two conference. The first conference I wanted to have was to go to the bus stations and the mechanic, all those uh, conductors. I want to invite them to a conference. Mm. Yeah. So, how what do I do in the conference? I was planning to invite Brother Israel. If I, if I, I was planning it already, that I would tell him in advance and make provision how he would join me in Benin. And maybe one other person that he, he, maybe he can find too. I was planning it already. It was on my plan. So I already had a friend that is, uh, I have a hotel with my good friend, my, my pal, my, my pal, you know. So he already gave me like three rooms extra, free, gave me a conference hall to use. So already making some provisions. So, like, what, what, so you wanted what, to make uh, like a HMT or just a daily uh, conference yeah, where people will come uh, and go? Uh, yeah, conference like, because you know, I discovered that uh, there are many people who don't even know who they are, as I said before. Mm -hmm. They think mm -hmm. the situation of life has turned them to that way and they don't have, they don't have reason. They don't have solution. Mm -hmm. They don't know what There's to do. There's no so, way out. No way out. So I don't want to go to those... Uh, Church, all those uh, church fanatic who know Bible more than me. No, I, I want to go to those people who will listen mm. and discover them that you. This is this was my plan. All those Bekele, carpenter, all those local local ones, all those one Bekele, all those Panebita, all those ones. Mm -hmm. uh, that mm. was my my plan is to show them a video of teachings of Adelaide. Mm. Then I will show you a YouTube video of how Europe works. People who work in the companies who work, like my company, I did a video, my company has some pictures. So I was trying to tell them that, look, we can, this is what God helps us to do with the help of the, the Bible from the book of Genesis, for example, from the creation where God gave us responsibility from chapter 28, that verse alone, to tell them that this is our responsibility is because you don't know whom you are. Because you don't know that God has created you for a purpose from the day you were born. They, they are not telling you that. They only tell you because you don't give to God, which is not true. So I wanted to show them, demonstrate a practical example and Bible words and couple to the reality. Now, what, what are you doing? Are you a carpenter? Yes. Did you improve on what you are doing before? You learned this work when? How many years ago? 15, 20 years ago? But we are in another generation now. But if you are not changing, you will stop where you are. The first mm -hmm. resources that God gave you is you, is your brain. The capacity of your brain, you are not even using only, you are not even using any percentage. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to wake up their consciousness to reality of life, that they are somebody. That is my First, uh, by the, the first category of the conference I was trying to uh, do, make, do this organize. year. Organize, yes, organize this year. So it's unfortunate that uh, 
it, it's not, uh, I mean, the, the world today that what is happening will not allow me to, to go to Nigeria this year. Too. Yeah, you're not alone. Um, everybody is suffering from the coronavirus situation, but it doesn't really stop much. It just gives you more time to gather resources, to gather more, you know, together to be more organized and, mm -hmm. you know, work towards next year when things begin to ease up mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the movement, you know, is no longer restricted. That's right. That's so, right. yeah, it's still going to happen. And I yeah, believe that it will happen on a grand scale. So just keep making yeah. your plans. And I feel like there's going to be no, no stopping you because the truth would always find a way to get to the depths That's of right. people's soul. Even yeah. if they might not, you know, accept it initially, but once that seed has been planted... Yeah. There is no way you can stop it from growing. And yeah. even those who might initially reject it, like a lot of people who have come on here in the past 22 days, yeah. they still came back, they embraced it, and it changed their lives. So I believe that what you're doing is going to really make an impact, especially for those who, like you said, are on the street. Because nobody seems to be reaching out to these guys. The church seems focused on just Christians and those who are in the white-collar and middle-class jobs. But like you said, the conductors, the mechanics, the carpenters, those who work with their hands, they are looked down upon. Nobody cares about them because they feel like they don't have enough money to give to churches yeah. and, you know, they don't really acknowledge them. But these are the people who Jesus died for. God loves them just as much as everybody else. So I believe that what you're planning to do would be a huge success and a lot of people will celebrate it because for the first time, somebody will come and show them love and show them care, and show them concern, and try to show them how to have the tools that it takes to make it in life and to move forward, and not feel inferior, to discover themselves. And I believe that that's going to be a really great one. So you're going to do it, that means next year, you have the first one. Do you want to have it once in a year or twice no, in a year? No, not really. What, what I want to have is this. My plan, my because what I've said before, DSA is full of everything, wisdom or knowledge, power, or strength, everything you want to think of. So that's why I said, when you are sincere, you are really sure, you trust, and really want to do something, you can do it. So I that came out from, again, my foundation. So during a couple of three months ago, I called my, my, my younger brother, he's a banker. So I told him, how do we register a foundation? What it takes to have mm -hmm. a foundation? So I want to have a place where every Saturday people will come there to learn. If you want to take it, maybe you are in the street, you don't have a place. Maybe I will have some couple of used clothes that will notary that I will have there. You come there, take a shower, just freshen up, relax, maybe take a coffee or tea with bread, something like that. Then watch video of before you do that, you know, you will take a time there to sit down and watch video for like one hour, maybe a message from Adela Chai, from his. Okay. Yes. Then you sit down, you watch and listening. Then maybe every Saturday, maybe we'll come to two times in a week. But what I'm doing now, I'm trying to, because I will not be there 100%, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get people who have like minds like me, which I'm working on, as I said before. I think I have three mm -hmm. of guys now that I'm working extra to get with, to to get understanding and impart some understanding because I'm, they are, they're now, they, they, I think we have some similarity now. They understand already because one of them is in the extra large, is my cousin, he's a very brilliant guy. I'm seeing his activities on extra large farm. So this is a winner, sharper guy that I told him they were using your brain for more than 20 something years now. And they just barely give you pastor, <laughs> assistant pastor. So the day I talk with him, I really use some, because he's my younger brother, cousin, I use some powerful words, some, like, you want to be insulted. I say, if you want me to insult you, I can't, I have the right, but you need to listen to me. So I think from that day, he started having some change of mind. I said, you know that you are very brilliant. So because you are brilliant, they give you that right to be an activity. You think that is the service of God? So what have you achieved since you have been a Christian? You have been carrying Bible even when I was uh, when I was still in Nigeria, and you are still asking me more. I do some kind word to tell him, look, rethink and see that you still have opportunity. Mm. So when yeah. this opportunity of extra large uh, arrived, I was the first person that I, after myself, was the first person that I registered. 
And I heard that sending him messages and everything. And he's seeing the, the reality of life, how life's supposed to be, how kingdom, kingdom message, kingdom fruit, how you're supposed to be a Christian. He's seeing it now. Because he's very active in the extra large uh, uh, group. And because I'm watching, I'm seeing it. What he's doing there is reclaim, is uh, have, have advertisement and all, you know. So he knew already. So that is one. I have one of that guy again. He's a manager of my friend hotel. He's from uh, Benue State. The guy is very good. He's a very calm, good guy. He's a deeper light guy. But I've been working on him for this since I met Adelaide since two years now, three years. So he's doing video now too. So he has started speaking now. out. Yeah, yeah, he has started speaking out. So I have some comedians my, from my state, which I've gathered like two of them. And I know one apostle is doing a great job now. So I saw his video, Apostle, you know, sir, he's a very good guy. He said, Adelaja message changed, one message changed him. Mm. He was already, he's a pastor, he has a church. Mm. The guy yeah. is speaking now, he's speaking every day, two times in the day. So I have him now, like a team. So I'll be speaking with him, what I want to do is vision, my vision maybe is similar, so we need to pull it out. So my plan is to start from where I was born, the region that I was born because I want to go to the market square with a trumpet, mm. Mm. with people with me, people I know that God have chosen, people that think that they are nobody. I want to go to the market square to tell our mothers to stop. This is, no, I, I believe what I'm saying has been in my mind for like a couple of one years now. And sometimes it's like I want to explode when I'm here. I told mm -hmm. last time I discussed with Adelaide, I said, I'm not here anymore. My, I just feel that I'm not, Belgium is not my mission. It's not where I, I, I mean. So your promised yeah. land is Nigeria? It's Nigeria, yes. And you're from Benin City, right? I'm from Benin City, yes. I'm from Edo All right, Benin. so your promised land yeah. is the people of, is Benin City, and the people of yeah, Benin City started, would love started, to have you back. Started, so do yeah, you intend started, to move yeah. from Belgium back to Nigeria at some point? Yeah, because... Uh, yeah, actually, when I'm saying it, people think I'm lying because I don't know why they say, okay, yeah, you have all the facilities. It's difficult here. Yeah, we we'll see what is happening in Nigeria. I'm, I'm happy that, yeah, I have the facilities to go and come back uh, to go to maybe 145 countries in the world, yes. But that is not what is interesting me. Mm. Is there mm. in, way in Nigeria? Yeah, you found yeah, your right. purpose. So traveling around doesn't matter anymore. Environment no, no. doesn't matter. The kingdom no, is within you, you, and all that you're it interested matter. in now is bringing about change. Yes, and I started speaking out, uh, telling friends that they already build the trust. I mean, now when I start, they want to come. I don't want to do it like if I want to be a fraud star, like people would. They ever they haven't started anything. They will be starting asking money. No, I want to start something. Sacrifice on it. People will see what is happening. Testimony will be there. Mm. But because of the, I believe the trust I have, I view for even when I was in Nigeria, when I speak to some colleagues, some friends in America, in Nigeria, even here in Europe, even some colleagues are white guys, they really want to contribute to it. But I don't want to do it that way. I want to have it proof. Because the same thing I want to do here, when I started Nigeria and they see the proof, then I will have my own conference here, invite people. Maybe they will come and eat and pay for the food. Like maybe the food supposed to worth twenty euro. They will pay fifty euro, something like that. They show <laughs> video for them. What have This is this is things I have learned from the planning process of the larger messages. Mm -hmm. All these things I don't know them before. If I have known them, maybe I would not even come to Europe mm -hmm. because I was having an opportunity to work in seaport in I think Ireland, Papa travel some Africa countries, but the wisdom was not there. The knowledge was not there. So we all think that uh, Europe, when we come to Europe, we have everything. But even most of us are here, we don't even know, most people don't even know what they're doing. They don't know how these things is work here, how the system work, how this work, we don't know. But this true, I did like I mentioned, I know how things work here in Europe. I know how they, are, they sacrifice a lot, hard work. They don't pray, they are sacrifice hard work. They lay foundation, they lay principles from school, from kindergarten. But we have to go and bring those message to the politicians, to, the, to our villages, all those uh, religious, all those, uh, what do you call, uh, um, our traditional people, we need, they need to wake up, we need to create something different. Because Nigeria, we just look, 
recently when the coronavirus, people were just complaining for me food, just ordinary food. Ordinary food. I don't have food to eat. That is what they were complaining about. That tells me that people don't know what to do. We go to church, we pray, God will provide banner from heaven. And then manna will not come from heaven. The manna is already here on earth. We don't know how to process it. We have vast land, we have river, we have everything. You know, it's very, very, things I have known. For me, I think, yeah, I'm here now, I'm just wasting time. Mm. So um, you believe you're wasting time in Europe. That's not something yeah, yeah. you hear many people say because I'm you, there are because men who are swimming across the Mediterranean to get to where you are. And many of them are sadly dying, you know. And we yes. see the news every week. Thank God for the coronavirus, you know. Anyway, it's killing a lot of people. So I, I can't really say, you know, that's a great thing. But due to the coronavirus stopping travel, we, mm. uh, we see less of that now. But I'm sure you might have seen it in the news how a lot of people struggle in boats, in little rafts, and then yeah, most, did, most of them lose yeah. their life. So for you to be saying you're wasting your time in Europe, it's clear that transformation has really taken place within yeah. you. And you're yeah, ready to because, change, to change because, the yeah, new city what, at least. Yeah, you know, the truth is that, you know, when you understand some principles about life, and when you are honest and truthful, and you have that passion in you, you know, you, there's no way you can resist it. Mm -hmm. I know where I come from. I know how I left. I was like, man, I was a hustling guy, you know, hustling, looking for daily food, looking for, you know, trying to, to have some. But many people are still living like that, below that. They, they don't have the, maybe they may not have the opportunity that I have, or the strength, the luck that I have, or the people that I met on my journey. But there's something in them. There is something that they don't know that nobody has told them. I make an illustration one day. I said, why do we, we that is able people, we don't, we are thinking we don't have, we don't, cannot work or we cannot create something for ourselves. Why you see some disabled people, they go to Olympics, they win gold. Mm. They're swimming, they, they have, they have, they don't have hand, they maybe probably they have one hand. I said, there is something that God did purposely if you have wisdom, if you have knowledge, you have understanding, you are truthful, you were able to see, to compare. But some people, because of where we're coming from, and we are not being told, and religion, all these re religious pastors, all these uh, fake pastors everywhere in Nigeria, all these, all of them, they have sold the people's mind. They have torn their mind, they have torn their body, their, their way of thinking. So people will insult you, they want to even stab you to death because you talk to one of their pastors or one of their G or whatever. Mm. But we yeah. must talk. We must speak. There's no two ways about it. There's no, I cannot be silent. When I studied the Black of Silence, of, I you have done everything. You have, you have, you have, you have tried. If you, have, if you stop now, nothing will stop. Hmm. It's already a moving train. Yeah, not So DSC has unleashed the truth into the world, yeah. and no matter imagine, what happens, it imagine, just keeps me, going. Yeah. Let, me give you, let me give you a list of books that I, I have. Not, I've, I've not finished them, so I glanced through because it's too mighty, it's too big. One shatter can turn you. I said, life, life is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. The Blake of Silence, mm -hmm. the Elijah Challenge, the Martin of Ignorance, the Church Creates Economic Recession, the Essence and Value of Life, the Truth, No Truth, and Lies, Church is a Bridge Ground for Saviors and Deliverers. All mm -hmm. these books, they are, what, how will I describe them? <laughs> You will find something to do. You will find your purpose. You will find your calling. You will find, you will find the, whom you are. You want only one of the book. Because it's Adelaja, they, they, they cannot stop him anymore. Let them just forget about it. <laughs> cannot stop the movement. Let them just forget. They, you know, I, people are negative all the time. I might be negative sometimes, but when the truth comes, let me just quickly say this. When I was during one of my soliting, ask a question, is he real? Dear Adela Jari, is he, is he going to fight this battle? It's not that he's not real. Is he going to fight this battle? Is he going to end it? God, show me. Just I want to know. I want to see. I had a dream. Mm -hmm. I was in a place that a building that many people were just around the building, running around, turning around. They don't stop. 
and people fold their hand and watch it dead, falling, dying. I was somewhere, I was helpless watching. I'm saying this on a live. I know what I'm talking about. I was like saying, how do I stop this? Well, people were dying, falling, nobody helped them. They were running around. Guess who were standing watching them? All these big name pastors were all there. All these big name pastors, they were there. I was like, let them stop them now. Me, I cannot stop them, I don't have the strength. Immediately, Adelijah appeared. I'm saying it. Everybody just stopped. They were breathing like they, they want to pass out. Hmm. When I look back, it was him. I said, wow, where did you come? Like, I want to, where did you, thank, you, thank God, where did you come from? That's how I opened my eyes. I said, this man, nobody can tell me anything anymore. I have seen, I ask, I see. And I have seen it on everything, all the handwriting, everything. I said, so it was only when he appeared that the people were able to stop and come to their senses that they were going around in senses. circles. Yes, yes, yes. And they were, they were about to die because yes, they were already some exhausted. Some already, some of them have, some of them Meanwhile, fought. other people were standing idly by watching them. Yes. Hmm. This is true life, I'm telling you. I'm not saying exaggerating. I'm, I, I don't even know that I'm going to say this. But he come because he has been in my mind. He has been there. He has, I've, I saw it. Not that I'm, I'm exaggerating, no. So this was after you prayed and you said God should reveal who yes, DSA is to you, whether he's yes, real or yes, not, or whether like, he'll be able to make it all the way to the end. It was even beginning early, early last year, not even this year. Hmm. It never changed in my mind. This world, I not, I'm not. I think I have said it to a sister that I know, to Adelaja in Germany. I share, I share with her a couple of weeks ago, months ago. So when I, when we we're discussing, she's a very great woman of God too. I know how they've been. I've been to, you have invited me to a conference too. I know how to, Adela Jamin came to Germany when I went okay. to visit him in mm. Germany, yes. She's a very strong lady and she's doing a great work around Europe in Germany too. She's a strong follower, Adela Jamin follower too. Yeah. So there's a lot of things I, will, I, will, I have seen. I will say yes, because maybe people will say, oh, hey, just no, I'm not bragging. But they didn't see what's going to happen in the next future. Mm. Mm. Because I, during his message, so I knew that people that you recognize on, on the world, they might, people might not know him now, but in the next generation to come, his name will be written with God. There are a lot of people like that. Mm. That nobody knew that what they were fighting for, justice, peace, equity, love, change of of, of oppression but these are things that we don't understand but because i do that nigerians that i know where i was where my con my lovely country we are very smart people forget about it but the smartness that we have now is the opposite side what they we have been experiencing or what they have taught us or what we have learned or they have met on ground but when the the changing is coming and they begin to see difference they begin to see difference, which is already on ground. Somebody's there speaking to the authority. This is what the pastor's supposed to do. Not helping them, not helping the pastors or helping the police, sorry, the politicians to steal money, putting them in positions in the church, money for contracts to do to build roads, to build hospitals, or to do build schools. They are building schools that people cannot go. One point something million to pay for who is receiving. Money, those kind of money in Nigeria, it's not the politicians that they are stealing our money or the, the contractors or the people who have opportunity to the money. Who, is, who, mm. who are the people who are in their schools? These are questions people don't know. They say, don't question. Why we don't question? Why we don't ask? We must speak. We must begin to speak. Everybody begin to identify one or two problems, the problem we solve. And we run at the same time. They tell you, if you are, if you are here in this church, nothing will enemies hurt you. That is not true. Believe that you must pass through some, some difficulties in life. They don't tell you that because they don't want you to, yeah, they don't have power, they don't have anything. They must build people for true. Even Jesus himself, from the day he was born, they started carrying, running after from King Aaron. The problem started from the day he was born. So we Christians must believe, must know that we must pass through some challenges in life. We don't have to run for a problem. We must we must prepare at all times. The Bible even tells us, Luke chapter 10, verse 19, 
He said, behold, I've given thee power to trade on all kind of things. In any means, we know what you, nothing will hurt you. So why? They are telling the people, if I'm a man of God, if God called me, God did not call you. Teach people principles of life. Teach them how they'll have a relationship with God. Teach them how they will have, they will love God, loving human beings. Without, you don't love him, you love, you love your brother, love your neighbor. Imagine we come to this country, for example, I want to buy this house. What do I need to buy a house here in Baja? Not cash, just a contract. Mm. Those are principles that was laid. And they didn't exempt me because I'm, exempt me because I'm not a Belgian born citizen. So long I have the, the, the facilities and I meet the criteria, the bank gave me money. I don't need to go and pray. And you just don't need to walk. And follow the rules and the and principles. follow the rules. You know, what is miracle? I was coming from Germany in February. So I was caught up with a, with a, with a, with a how do you say it? Um, uh, this uh, camera, you know? I just saw it. I said, wow. I was not always speeding, but I was on 70, something to 80, because it was in, you were in the city. Two weeks wow. later, I got a bill. I got a bill from Germany. I caught you, and you had to pay a bill. Yeah, my what I want to say, my picture on the stereo was on that camera, on that on that bill. My face mm -hmm. is that no miracle? Mm -hmm. Nobody was there. Nobody was there, standing there. Mm. It was cre creativity of men. They just place it there. I will disobey the rules. I got penalty for it. I got paid for it. You had to pay the I price. To, I have to pay the price. Mm. So people are sitting down in the pool. Well, look at our... I, one day I called my younger uh, nephew. I said, he's in Uniben. I said, can you tell me, assess how many churches that's in Uniben inside the compound? How? He said, he said daddy, he says a lot. Hmm. He said, why did you ask? He didn't know why I asked. I said, we said, why did you ask? I said, did we supposed to have church inside the campus. He said, no, he said, Daddy, we need to have a Christian. You know, we need to pray. I said, we don't need to. And when I now give him the understanding that the reason why we are complaining because we are not producing, even those ones that said they are in school. See, people are, some medical doctors, young medical doctors are forming pastors inside the church. Young engineering people are forming pastors inside the inside the campus how do you expect us to create the, our environment we don't have electricity we don't have good road we don't have uh, people uh, waste is our business our biggest problem in nigeria is waste no proper waste disposal system no but people are just praying inside the church or sundays like this. you'll just go and see nigeria after church everybody will go to restaurants and cafe and drink themselves out no message there. Hmm. Is it all a threatening message? Threatening, evil message. When I when I read uh, uh, what they call uh, a ledger challenge, I see a lot. That hmm. too, that was what opened my mind. I said, no, me, I, mean, me, I don't care what's going to happen. I have seen somebody who have raised the battle, and I myself, we do the same. It was difficult for my wife. I think gradually, gradually, she will get used to it. Then we will we, we'll form a team together. That is my prayer. I believe that our prayer will be answered. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it from Rob Peter all the way from, Jam from Belgium. And um, he told you the story of how his trip from Germany turned out. He broke the law. He had to pay the price. A lot of us, our problems are not demons. Our problems are not the devil. Our problems are just failures to follow basic rules. And some of us, um, it's not because we're bad people or we're just intentionally rebellious. It's just that we don't know these laws and principles. No. So you can go to Dr. Sonia Dillager's Facebook page and you will see some of the messages on the videos. And you can go to his YouTube page as well. We just celebrated getting past 100,000 subscribers on wow. the YouTube channel. And YouTube sent us a letter. You can go there and you see the unveiling of the plaque that was sent and the letter that was sent by the CEO of YouTube. And when you go there, you will be able to see messages. He talked about the message, the series on truth. Every message you see there is under a playlist. So you can go through the playlist of truth. 
you can go through the playlist of thinking. In that series, DSA teaches us how to think. He teaches us how to critique. He teaches us how to ask questions. That's and these right. are things that are required for you to function as a human being. This That's does right. not even have to do with Christianity. This has yeah. to do with you functioning as a human being that was put in this world by God to dominate and to carry out his purpose. And this is what Europeans and, and, and not Americans and those in the civilized world have discovered. And that's why they are not as religious. And that's why sometimes when they see us doing all of this religious gymnastics, they, don't, they cannot relate. Yeah. Because in their world, they follow principles and laws and things work. There's a place for the spiritual, there's a place for the, for the psychological, there's a place for the physical, there's a place for the mental. Everything has its place. That's so when right. you go on DSS platform, on, you, on his YouTube channel, you'll be able to see all of this series that would help to teach you to discover yourself. If you want to start a family, there's a family series. If you want to know That's how right. to raise your kids, there is something for that as well. If you want to understand life, there is a series on life. If you want to become a millionaire and you want to become rich, there is a series for that as well. And there's also a mentorship program that is currently running for those who want to become millionaires. If you want to become a millionaire and you want Pastor Sunday or DSA to mentor you through the process, write to the email mentorship at godembassy.org and you'll be welcomed into the system. You'll be told what to do. And if you follow through, you'll be able to become a millionaire in the next few years according to the program that has been planned out. You heard Peter talking about extra large farms. It's a new business opportunity in Nigeria for people who are interested in investing and people who are interested in multiplying their income. So you can go to his Facebook page. You can see his name on the screen, Peter or Sir Andrew, and he will tell you about the extra large farms. Or you can just go to the extra large farms. Just go on Google and type extra large farms Nigeria, and you'll be able to see their platform, and you, you can as well get involved. They are creating jobs for people. They are creating opportunities for people to be able to invest in buildings, in different agricultural produce. And it's all Nigerian. It's organic. And it's something that, you know, is revolutionary. There's nothing like it in the country currently. So that's an opportunity for you. And like he said, he has gotten his family involved. And he's now making sure that these guys become practical believers, not just people shouting amen in church. So please yeah. go on all of these platforms and make sure that you utilize these tools that have been given to you. They are all free. A lot of people spend time on the internet just browsing through their Facebook pages or watching some funny videos or movies or series on Netflix. It's time for you to stop giving out your time for nothing. And it's time for you to start using your own time to invest in yourself so that you can become a person of value. He has invested in himself and he's saying Europe is not my place anymore. Most people want to come to Europe, but he wants to go back to Nigeria because of what he now knows and because of what he has become due to the messages and the transformation that has, has, has been able to take place on the inside of him. So please, um, don't just sit idly by. Don't just be somebody who says, oh, okay, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. No, you are in charge of your life and you can bring about whatever change and whatever transformation you want to see both in yourself and in your world. That is why we were created. So before we go... Please, Peter, can you tell us um, your final message for DSA and um, <laughs> your congratulatory message on his 53rd birthday? We are wow. six days away from the D-Day now. So what, do you, what would you like to say to DSA? Wow. Um, I'm short of words to say DSA because DSA is... Uh, I am so very happy at the time I met him, um, at the time I know him, and it was a... I, I would not. I would say it was the right time for me, that particular time for me to know him. Um, I want to congratulate him as well for thank him for all that he have done, all that he have done for me, for the world, for everybody. And I'm short of words. I don't really know the word to use, but I'm so happy to know him, to re identify myself with him as as as. As a person, as a, as a leader, as a mentor, as a pastor, as a reformer, all in all, he has opened my eyes to see opportunities. I thank him for that. He has made me to discover my purpose, my life, and I'm so happy. I thank him for all that he has done. I'm so very grateful. I wish him the best of life, long life, good health, prosperity, more wisdom, more knowledge. God should equip him more and his family. That is my wish for him. And I pray and I ask that the time we come, that we both, we go to Nigeria together. That is where we am dreaming of to God. That is where I'm waiting for. And I really thank him. I'm happy to identify myself with him once again. 
Thank you, DSA, for all that you have done. Thank you for my life, for the transformation. And that's the love that you have for me. And immediately I call you. You always answer me, not even one day, not two hours more. Immediately I sent a message. You will call me back. I really appreciate you, DSA. Thank you very much for what you have done. God bless you, sir. Amazing. Amen. Amen. So that was Peter's message all the way from Belgium. I'm sure DSA would get back to you on that. And I'm sure he appreciates what you've done. So today we're celebrating DSA, but as well we're celebrating Peter Ose Andrew all the way from Belgium. And we can see his testimony is remarkable. And this is the future. We are the people who have to change our continent if we want to see change. The time for whining and complaining is gone. It's time for you to improve yourself and to begin to become somebody who would stand up and be counted among those who did not sit idly by or who, do, who were not silent when evil and disorder and chaos was ravaging the earth and ravaging Africa. So how many Peters do we have out there today? Many of whom don't know what he knows. So please share this link so that you can get to as many people as possible and rescue them. So we're going to be back here again tomorrow. Um, DSA's app is about to be launched. It's called Vintage DSA. It's going to have everything DSA in it. So please stay tuned and uh, make sure that uh, you're ready to download it on your mobile devices as soon as it's made ready. So once again, Amazon is a place for you to get all the books. So thank you very much, Peter, for coming. God bless you. We love you. And we say greet your family for us and uh, let them know that... Uh, we appreciate you and uh, we're, we're celebrating all that you have done. So we're going to be back here again tomorrow at the same time to keep celebrating with DSA. His birthday is on the 28th, but we're going the whole, you know, throughout the whole month, every single day, we're having a new guest and they're sharing with us their experience with DSA. And DSA came up with this idea because he said it's about people. He wants to be able to see how best he can reach people, celebrate people, and act as a ladder to help people get to the next level and to get to wherever it is that they want to be. So thanks for coming along with us on the ride today. We're going to be back same time tomorrow. Don't miss it. We're going to have another interesting guest, and I can assure you that you'll be intrigued. You will learn from their testimonies, and you will have life-transforming testimonies transforming your own life as well. So those of you who have missed several days, and today is your first day, please go on Dr. Sonia Adelaja's YouTube channel and go to Life Transforming Testimonies. That's the name of the playlist. And you'll be able to see all of the people who have testified from the first day up until today. And you can be able to watch. And um, I can assure you, whichever one you click on, you're not going to remain the same after watching it. Thank you very much once again for joining us. Wherever you are, we want to say we love you. See you same time tomorrow. I'm Joshua Matari coming to you from Kiev. Have a blessed day and take care.